Okay. Right. The in this um, uh, in, in the, the, the storyboard that we've got, there's, there's there's several photos of you and as you accept in your your statement, you are a female one. Um, where are the clothes that you were wearing that night? Okay. So you've, I think when we first, when you're first seen on the camera, you've got like a jacket on, um, possibly either black socks or, or black tights with black at the bottom. They look like Vans trainers. Um, can you tell me where we can find those clothes? No comment. Where's the Nike bag that you had with you on no that comment. night? Is there any reason that you can't or won't tell me where those clothes in that bag are? No comment. Have you have you got rid of them or thrown them away? No comment. This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. 16-year-old Dion Williams lied to the police. She lied to everybody about what happened last year in Butte Park involving the murder of Gary Jenkins. In a prepared statement, she denied any involvement and said that she felt she had to participate or the two other men would have killed her. But this week, the Welsh teenager has been convicted of the murder, along with Jason Edwards and Lee Strickland. The CCTV and audio from the murder scene contradicted what she said. Gary Jenkins was a psychiatrist and on the day of the murder he was last seen at a restaurant eating food and paid for it using his bank card that would later be stolen. Gary was estranged from his wife but he had two children who he regularly went to see in London but tonight he would be going to Butte Park where he would be hoping to find a male that he could have a relationship with. Butte Park had gained a reputation for a place where gay males could go to find companions. And sadly on this night, three other people were in the park and their intent was to rob gay men. And in the early hours of the morning on the 20th of July, Dion Williams had made her way to town. She bumped into two men, drug addicts, that were sat on a bench drinking alcohol and they offered her a drink and she accepted. The trio then became friends and they had never met each other before, but they went to the park to drink more beer. A key part of the prosecution for the murder of Gary Jenkins was about CCTV that was located inside a cafe that was nearby. During the trial for the murder of Gary Jenkins, the courtroom was shown the CCTV of the attack and they heard the audio. The prosecution said that Dr. Jenkins was cruelly beaten, robbed, tortured and left for dead. This happened at 1am in the morning and a man identified as Mr. Jenkins can be heard on audio saying leave me alone and get off me. A female voice is then heard saying money and now. Homophobic slurs were said by one of the defendants believed to be Edwards who has a Liverpool accent and Dr. Jenkins made repeated pleas for his life and said why and please stop. Dion can be heard saying get down and do it, do it, hit him again. Another male's voice said stamp on his head, stamp on his head too. Somebody else repeated keep on going and let me stamp him again. The brutal attack lasted for 15 minutes and Dion can be heard saying afterwards, yeah, I needed that. Dion said in court that she took part in the attack alongside the strangers because she was scared for her life. Jason was 25 years old and Lee was 36. The prosecution said that Dion had gone out that night looking for somebody to rob and to commit violence. There was a lot of people in the park on that night and one of the witnesses was Lewis Williams. He was heard in the disturbing audio attempting to try to save the life of the doctor and he told the police that he attempted to lie on the body of Mr Jenkins to stop him from getting kicked and punched. The defendants laughed and he said that Dion was evil and sadistic and they went on to also attack the man that was trying to save the life of the victim. The barrister in the trial went to the part of the police statements where the males were said to have took the lead in the attack. The witness agreed and said they had greater physicality and they, but all three of them were involved in the assault. She was recorded as saying to the two men, if we are going to Butte Park, can we at least go and steal? 
The court was told that the teenager, after leaving the scene, went to her friend's house and stayed there. Her friend told the courtroom that she just stayed up chatting all night and they went to sleep and then she returned back to her village the next day. Edwards and Dion were seen leaving the park at 1.29am on the 20th of July. They embraced each other and went their separate ways and Dion passed Edwards a phone belonging to Mr Jenkins at 145 Edwards then returns to the bench in Queen Street where he takes part in a celebratory hug with his co-defendant Strickland and they have broad smiles on their face. The two murderers are seen riding around Cardiff City Centre on a bicycle afterwards until they are spotted by police just outside Butte Park at 2.10am. Edwards ran off but Lee was stopped by the police and arrested. At 2.15 he was searched and police discovered the red Santander card that belonged to the victim, Dr Jenkins. They was unaware of the victim's identity at this stage and PC Philip Coleman, who was given evidence in court and was the officer that stopped Lee, said that he noticed that there was blood on his trousers. The police officer said that the suspect was usually around the town centre begging and on that evening he said he was in the park for a piece. The officer went on to say in his evidence that his words were slurred and that it was difficult to understand everything that he was saying. The officer de-arrested him because there was no evidence that he committed a crime at this time. A second witness of the attack that took place inside the park was Owain Hill. He was a gay man that had also come to the park looking for other men to have encounters with. He said in the courtroom that he was sober enough during the incident. I wasn't walking all over the place. The witness said he encountered the trio in the park in the early hours of the morning on the 20th of July. They wanted me to hang out with them, he said, and have some fun. And they suggested going behind the Summer House Cafe. And they wanted me to have sex with one of the guys. I believe the girl was with them and she walked behind the cafe first. And they offered me a drink. They was trying to get me to drink and I didn't want to. I started to get uncomfortable so I made an excuse to leave and I just walked away. A short time later, the witness said that he approached a gang of other men in the park that were having sex and he stayed there for 10 to 15 minutes. He then made his way back to the cafe which he had recently left and that is when he came across the group again. The trio tried to get him to drink and he said that he didn't want to and that is when he left for the final time. A matter of minutes later, he could hear shouting and screaming, and this was the trio attacking Mr. Jenkins. He said, at first I heard what I thought was shouting, and I turned round. I tried to listen to what was being said, but then I heard punching, and I heard people shouting. I went towards where the attack was taking place, but then I heard them get louder and louder, so I turned away. Mr. Hill said that he then called the police. During interrogation, Jason Edwards said that he lived in Cardiff and that he was drinking alcohol on the day of the murder. When they asked him about any addictions that he had, he said that he smoked cannabis and he also smoked crack, but he wasn't addicted. The court heard that Dr. Jenkins suffered a brain injury and he was beaten and tortured and left for dead and died two weeks later in hospital at the University of Wales. The prosecution had said that Dr. Jenkins had put himself in the situation by going to the park to find young men to have sex with. The CPS actually apologised later on during the trial for these comments and said that this was victim blaming. DNA was found in the flat of Jason Edwards and also inside the shoe and they said that it was consistent with him kicking the victim in the head. There was also blood found inside the victim's pocket and also DNA tests showed that it was a billion times to one likely that it was Lee Strickland. Gary's family said that he was a very kind soul and he wouldn't hurt anybody. He was a very generous person and also a creative person. He had a lot of good intentions and Gary's private life has been put on show throughout the whole of this trial and this has intensified the impact on the family. The clothes worn by Dion on the night of the murder were never found and they said in court that she was forensically aware and very intentionally tried to get rid of any DNA evidence. The prosecution said the level of violence from all three defendants was truly shocking and the evidence showed that they appeared to enjoy the cruelty of what they was doing to the victim. All three of them were found guilty of murder and will be sentenced on the 25th of March. The judge said the men should expect a sentence of 30 years and Dion is expected to receive 12 years. Detective Inspector Stuart Wales involved in the case said the attack upon Mr Jenkins was totally cowardly and senseless and they have stolen a father from two girls and also his family.
So my condolences to the family of Dr. Jenkins. And I think this video and story definitely says a lot. I'm sure that when all of these people went out that night, they didn't think they was going to participate in murder. But now they are all going to have to face the consequences for their choices. And this is definitely a big lesson. So I really appreciate you joining me today. Please don't forget to follow me online as well at Scar City Studios on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter and Facebook. And I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.